talking Cause you know we got some problems So to know in a way we talking out to solve them We may laugh, we may learn, we might be your king Hi. Hi. Where are you right now? Still in Chicago. Fun fact about Chicago, we were on a work trip there and Shannon and I and Alana were sitting in a cab and I was like, I can't believe we're in Ohio. That's crazy. And <laughs> Shannon's like, we're in Indiana. And Alana's like, get out. Like, this guy is going to take us to a ditch and kill us because you don't even know what's going Yeah, right. that slander in the car. <laughs> Calling us Ohio or Indiana. <laughs> so funny. Anyway. <laughs> well, how how is it going? Like, how has the season been? Um, how's, how's everything, like, been? Yeah, the season has been good. It's just like so long. Honestly, like looking back at the beginning feels like forever ago. Um it's so forever ago, right? <laughs> it is like preseason feels like years. Um, but the season is good. I mean, we made it, so that was exciting. Um, but like soccer stuff, it's been it's been crazy the last couple weeks. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. What has been your mentality as a team the last few weeks? Yeah, I think at first we just kind of wanted to kind of feel all the emotions. It was like super emotional and it was more important to like kind of get out what you were feeling instead of just like going straight to the field. Mm -hmm. So that was nice that we were all able to kind of like be together and like just talk about stuff. And then once we got through the first couple of days, it was like, okay, now we have to like really turn on. We have this like huge game coming up. So the rest of this week has been good. I think we're in a really good mindset now, kind of more excited and kind of put all the sad emotional stuff in the past. That's, That's awesome. awesome. It's so important that you all talked it out because keeping that stuff in is definitely going to impact your game. So you're from Illinois, right? You're from the yeah. Chicago area. Do your mm-hmm. friends and family come to your games? Yeah, my mom and my grandparents are at every single game. I think my grandparents have made friends with every single person in the stadium. And they're like, (laughs) we're Tatum's grandparents. Every single staff member I see, they're like, oh, we met your grandparents today. And I'm like, oh, I'm not even surprised. So that's like pretty funny that they're just like so known now. And then, yeah, just like my friends that I grew up with, it's fun when they can come out. And especially like my old club teammates, it's like, it's pretty cool. Does your grandparents wear your jersey? Yeah, they do. Occasionally, they'll throw on um, the college gear. Um, He claims it's good luck, so we'll see. That's so cute. You got to send us a picture of that. I love that. Yeah, it is really sweet. Yeah, for sure. I know. Like, I don't know. The other day, I was like, I can't wait to be a grandparent. Like, grandparents are, like, the funnest. (laughs) Yeah, they just get all, they do, like, all the easy parts. They get to just, like, be the the cool, go have fun. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And so speaking of college, so you went to the University of South Carolina, right? Yes. So that's, they're wearing, they're repping your college gear too? Yeah. Yep. Nice. So what was that, like, rewinding back to that, what was your recruiting process like? Yeah, I think it started, like, freshman year of college, or high school is when I started kind of looking at all the emails and, like, kind of deciding what I wanted. And then I actually got an email from South Carolina, and I was like, I'm embarrassed to say this now, but I was like, what what is this what is this place and then I was like oh well it's like in the south which is like way warmer than here so like let's go visit give it a shot and then I just was like yeah I love it here and then I think by junior year I had committed and it was it was a really good choice it was a really good fit isn't it funny how like small our world is yeah. like that age like <laughs> or, or me and Carly's age with Chicago you never know <laughs> but it's like like you're at that age and you think you know oh what I've always wanted is all that there is and I know what's best for me and blah 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 but if you really kind of open your I guess your your thoughts to just being a little bit more perceptive to new places and things you're like you went to a ridiculous soccer school that you didn't even know you know yeah, how I had no idea what was even there. <laughs> but it's supposed to show like the opportunities are there and uh, definitely have to be open minded to them because I think all three of us talked about we were pretty close minded at the college picking age too. Yeah, because I feel like you have this idea of like these top schools that you're like, 
okay, these are like the best places or even just like regionally around you. I was like, okay, like Notre Dame's close, like Northwestern, anything in Illinois. And then I was like, I'm not, I think I've been to Myrtle Beach. I don't know if that's like by South Carolina at that point. So yeah. What were you looking for in, in a school? Um, I, I wanted somewhere where I would have a chance to play kind of early on. I kind of wanted to, even if it was like a sub in freshman year, I think a lot of places were more like, you won't play till this age and this year or whatever. Um, and then also the weather, I was like, I need it to be warm. It was like depressing in the winters here. And I was like, I can't, can't do that any longer. If I can get out, I will. And when you stepped on campus, like you knew right away, like, did you continue looking at other schools or once you were there, you're like, I knew it, like gut feeling. Yeah, I think I went on one other visit after um, to like University of Louisville. And I was like, yeah, I think that was that was my pick. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty easy, thankfully. <laughs> I feel like it's good to visit more than one college because you get to compare and contrast. And I For think that's sure. important because you knew looking back, it's kind of like when you try on like a wedding dress, yeah. you have to try on more than one. And then, you know, you're like, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And all the good things. I was like, okay, well, this school has this and this school has this, but it still outweighs all the rest. It was really good to like, just even go see options that I think my first visit, I went on somewhere where I knew I didn't want to go. But my mom made me go to like, just go get the nerves out of like having your first visit and just like kind of learning how to talk to the coaches on your visit without having the pressure of like, oh, I really want to go to this school, which was really helpful. That's a really good point. We've never talked about that. Maybe not picking your like top number one first helps. Yeah. So you can kind of ease out those nerves and, and speak exactly. to coaches just a little bit first, just to get used to it. That's, I like that. It's a good idea. It is a learning curve talking. To <laughs> yeah. I remember being like, mom, what do I say? No, I remember what my mom being like, look them in the eye. I was like, <laughs> shake their hand and talk to them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So yeah. Wait, so did you enjoy your college years at, at school? And was there anything super challenging about college soccer that you look back on and you're like, wow, that was hard to get through? Yeah, I think. It, it was a great experience overall. I loved it. I think my teammates were great. Um, the coaches there were awesome. So it was it was a really fun time. I think the most challenging thing was, I think I went in thinking like, okay, I'm going, I'm an outside back. I play outside back all the time. And then I think sophomore and junior year, I got thrown into center back, which like isn't a huge difference now looking back. But at that time I was like, I can't do this. Like, this is so hard. Like I've played this my whole life. Like now I'm in, in college and like, I have to learn this. So I think that was being op again, open-minded to like you, if they want you on the field, you should be able to learn different positions. So that was challenging, but also really helped a lot because I mean, now we play three center backs. So it's like, okay, that was pretty helpful. <laughs> I'm so happy you brought that up because it was actually a question that we had. We wanted to know if you played defense your entire career. Um, so you still, you, I mean, you switched sides though. You went from the side to the middle. What was that transition like? Like, how did you move into that position easier? Did you work with the coach? Did you ask people for advice? Like how, how did that work for you? Yeah, I think both in college and this year, I've had really, um knowledgeable players next to me I know in Chicago I have Tierna I have Casey Kruger like I have all these people that I can ask all the time and then in college it was same thing like kind of looking up to I was playing next to um senior girls so that was really helpful to have them kind of be that like voice in your ear during the game to help guide you which I think now having a little more experience like knowing how players talk to me that was helpful is helpful now being able to communicate better to other people so yeah, I, I just say the players around me were really, really helpful. I feel like older players are just like coaches. They want to help you. They're not going to get frustrated with you for asking mm -hmm. questions. They'd rather you ask the questions. That way you're not, you know, ass on the field to them, like making sure you're supporting them as best you right. can. So that's huge. And and just like speaking to a coach, it's like you might be nervous at first, but they're there to help you and they, they're on your team. They want you to be just as successful. So that's yeah advice and I think being the first or at least like the player going to the coach or the older veteran whatever kind of opens the door because maybe they don't want to like impose or like make you nervous so I think that being confident that like you know that they want to help you is really helpful
Definitely. Yeah. And same thing. I feel like when I was the older player, I enjoyed when younger players would come to me and ask me questions like that made me feel like, okay, they trust me and they want my advice. So now I feel like better giving it to them rather than just like chirping at them. So yeah, exactly. So did you always know you wanted to play professionally? I would say no. I think it was more of a serious thought near the end of college. I think being in high school, um, we played around the same fields as the Red Stars at that time. So it was not as like this, like, I feel like now you look up to older players and you like have fans and stuff where it was like super casual and like, it was more like, yeah, they're just like us, which is like crazy because it was like Julia Ertz walking around and it's like, (laughs) it's not normal. (laughs) Like they should be somewhere else type of thing. So at that point I was like, I think it's not that serious. Um which I'm glad that it's grown so much since then, because looking back at that, I'm like, wow, I can't believe these girls like were doing all this. Yeah. I know. I talked to players who were like Uber Uber drivers on the side and like crazy and how much the game has grown, even from you, like seeing that when you were younger, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, no, that wasn't really a serious thought. And then into college, I think is when, like, I feel like the draft started becoming a bigger thing and it was more exciting. So then I was like, oh, yeah, I, I think I definitely want to do this. What did you want to do before that? Um, Sports broadcasting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's what I kind of went that's to college for was kind of getting into that. And then I was like, well, if I don't have to do this, yeah. <laughs> it'll be a good thing to have in my back pocket later. Yeah, definitely. That's mm-hmm. cool. So growing up, did you have any inspirations on this in the soccer world? Did you watch soccer growing up? Whether it was men um, or I think we went to a bunch of Chicago Fire games growing up. Um, so I'm actually where I grew up was like 20 minutes from the stadium. So that was fun. I think we went to a lot of MLS games there. Um, I don't remember watching a ton of soccer, honestly. And then I think once the Red Stars were playing at like this college nearby, my club would go watch and like we'd dress up and have like theme stuff. So like I remember that being fun and like going to those games and being like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> like this is a fun night. That's fun. I'm glad that you guys actually went to the games. I wish we did that when we were kids. Like we went to like one New York Power game like every few years, you know, the little yeah. that existed. Right. But- yeah. It's cool that you got to do that. And what about role models? Um, and, and did you have any in any other sports or family or anyone that you looked up to in athletics? Um, I mean, I think being from Chicago, like always having Michael Jordan, just being here and like having such an intense, great story was really inspiring. Even if there weren't like a bunch of women around here that were like that I knew of yet or that were um, kind of excelling, whatever. Um, so I would say mainly that. Um, and then I think once I kind of knew professional soccer a little more, um, Vanessa Di Bernardo was, would always train with my club team. So I thought that was cool because I was like, okay, like she's a professional. And then like having her around us um, and seeing her from the beginning, I think has always been inspiring. And I think she's super cool for that. Love that. That's so cool that she played with you guys too. So you really did get to see firsthand what is possible. And I feel like that is something that we were all, well, our age group was lacking when we were growing up. Like we only had the 99ers and then like right. really no one else. Um, so that's really cool. And now you're that role model for so many younger players too, which is must make you feel so good yeah. <laughs> in such a like, as the NWSL is growing. <clears throat> so speaking of like being a pro, do you ever feel like your day-to-day is overwhelming? as a a professional athlete like do you ever get burnt out yeah I think there are some weeks that go by that you either like you're traveling weekend to weekend and you have like four or five days at home and in that time you're like okay I need to do this this and this and this time I need to also get groceries because I need to eat like kind of do all my laundry that type of thing so I think in like the short time crunches it can be overwhelming you're like I have so much to do but then I feel like there are other days where I go to training and I come home and then I have, it's three o'clock and I have nothing to do the rest of the night. So yes, there is a feeling of being burnt out at times. And you're just like, 
I just want to lay down, but I do feel like there's a balance of having those days where I can just like knock it up from the couch and like really just not do anything all day. Yeah. I was going to say, do you take advantage of the downtime? Uh, yeah. I feel like you <laughs> yeah. have to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. What do you like to do? Um, like on a day off, is there any, like anything that you guys like to do as a team or that you like to do, like you enjoy hobby wise off the field? Yeah, I think we're always kind of looking for like, well, currently we're looking for the newest, like comfiest coffee shop. So like more I like, like that. Coffee yeah, shop. we feel like all the ones we've been to lately have like really hard seats. <laughs> like We want to find the one that has the nice seats <laughs> where we can sit here for hours. So that's like on our list right now. Um, I recently got two kittens, so that's kind of taken um a lot of time. Okay, you see right now? Yeah, they're here. Should oh, I go get them? Yeah, go get them. Okay. Okay. Here's here's one. This is Charles. Come here, Mister. Oh, <laughs> hi, Charles. So cute. Me. Me. <laughs> and then, oh, oh, I mean, you can see her in her bed. Oh. oh, I love the bed too. <laughs> yeah, so they're spoiled. <laughs> there are two for the price of one going on. Yeah, well, we actually went to get one, and then we had like kind of picked her out on the like adoption place. Mm -hmm. And then when we got there, we were like, "Well, does she have any siblings?" And they're like, "Yeah, she has one brother that hasn't been adopted yet." And so we're like, "Okay, yeah. well, we we can't That's split them up." Uh, I feel like there's only one left, so we Aww. ended up taking them. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good hobby. Comfy, yeah. Comfy cats and kittens. You yeah. So that's me. that's been about it lately. <laughs> start a kid kitten cafe. I know that's what we were thinking. We we're looking. We we're like, how how quickly can we learn to be baristas? Like, if we're gonna get into this, that would yeah. Have right. soccer on, you know, make it a whole thing. That'd be fun. Yeah. It'll be a whole vibe in there. <laughs> um so what are your hopes for the for the future of the the league everything's been happening like recently I know there's like so much going on but what do you want to see in like terms of like the time that you're in the league and in the future for for the women's game is there anything that comes to mind that like you really hope to see happen yeah I think specifically with Chicago just because I'm so familiar I think now that we are looking for a better owner that's really gonna like take us to the next place I think that's kind of the first step I think we were excited to find someone that can like kind of make Chicago as great as like the whole city is and I think we're lacking a nice stadium we don't really have great facilities that's not in great location so it's like I think those are things that I would really like to see that I think could happen in the next five years so I think that's more of like a short term for Chicago, I think we could really make it nicer because mm -hmm. um, it's just not, it's really not that great right now. Um, for the league, I mean, I think the general idea is just to have people in place that like aren't going to harm or like abuse verbally, emotionally, any of that type of thing. I think that's the most serious thing at this point. And I think a lot has come to light, but I feel like there's more to ensure the most safety for everyone. So I think league-wide, I think that would be a really great thing to see. And I think it would be a lot more inviting to everyone because I feel like it's such a negative kind of cloud over the league when the players are really also great and like we all want the best for everything. So I think it would be more inviting for younger players or inspiring to see that, I mean, even the work that the players have done in the last couple of years is insane. So I think it would be really cool to kind of bump it up that much more and grow it that, that much bigger. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I hope that none of you, the players feel that there's a lack of support, you know, cause I know there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. like, I still want to support every single player because you guys are putting in so much work and have been so inspiring and it's shitty that shitty people, you know, take away from that. So Hopefully the next few years, you know, hopefully ASAP it starts to change, which it seems to be happening. Um, but hopefully that work continues so that it could just be like a really positive place for all of you because that's what you deserve. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any advice for younger players who are dealing with um, 
like challenging challenges with coaches or anything? Is there anything that you'd recommend for, for younger players, whether it's club or college or at any level? Yeah, I would say one thing that really has helped me and I think helped my teammates growing up was having a really good support system or at least being able to talk about it with whether it's your parents or your best friend or having someone to look up to that you can communicate with. I think being able to like clear your head and get your feelings out is really important instead of bottling it up because I mean, I usually don't like to express a lot of my feelings, especially involving like soccer stuff. And I think that learning that has been really helpful. And if I would tell younger me something, I think it would be like, it's okay to talk about your feelings to people yeah. because yeah. it's, at that time it's like soccer is your whole life it's everything like it's what you think about constantly but at the end of the day it's like you're a whole human and you have a lot of other thoughts and feelings and a whole life outside of just this one practice or game I love that and I feel like the more open you are to talking about and expressing how you feel the more you eventually realize that you're not the only person that feels that way yeah. and I even honestly feel like a lot with what's going on with the league it just took a few to like take the first step and to come out and share their experience and now you have over 200 people which is beyond unfortunate that that it's that many people to that level but that realize they didn't just go through this horrific thing by themselves or in a mm -hmm. small isolated group of people it was a league-wide thing and it just makes it so much easier to talk about it and when you can finally talk about it you can at least begin the process of healing or overcoming or you know exactly. leveling up so I'm, I'm really it's I love that you gave that advice because it is it's hard and I remember we even talked about now it's so easy for us to talk about everything we struggled with like when we played college soccer but at the time I remember keeping my damn mouth shut right like, I didn't talk about it <laughs> yeah. we all knew we were individually struggling but we didn't talk about it with each other right. so I love that advice I think that's really great I think that's true and also I feel like having people outside of soccer to speak to is is also important because you can talk to your teammates about it but then at some points you all I feel like we all thought things were normal that weren't so then right. having people on the outside being like that's not normal like that's yeah. okay how you're feeling like what can mm -hmm. we do to fix it is also helpful so yeah for good, sure that's a good point yeah on the field and off the field is huge all right cool so slow burning fire you can take your time <laughs> It's going to be kind of like a, you, you're going to pick one. Uh, would you rather okay. um, carpool karaoke or would you rather go on Dancing with the Stars? Dancing with the Stars. Are you a good dancer? No, but I'm a worse singer. So <laughs> I'd rather be a bad dancer than a horrible nice. singer. <laughs> would you rather spend the day at the gym or on the field? On the field. You're having a sweet post-practice snack or a salty one? Sweet. All right, you're at the comfiest coffee shop. Are you going to have an iced or a hot coffee? Iced. Nice. Would you rather go out or stay in? Stay in. Are you team salsa or guac? Guac. You're good. That's a tough one. That is tough, <laughs> actually. Tough. All right. You're answering the fastest out of everyone thinks yeah. so. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the next time I throw you. Uh, would you rather run the beep test or 300s? Beep test. <laughs> Have some some trauma with the 300s that I just would not <laughs> want to rehash. <laughs> would you rather read a really good book or binge a TV show? Binge a TV show. Would you rather order takeout or cook? Takeout. 100% <laughs> takeout. Is there anything specific you always order? um it's kind of in rotation there's like a good pizza place we have a really good Thai place in rotation mm -hmm. um and then like Chick-fil-A is always just kind of thrown in there <laughs> <laughs> all right would you rather swim with the sharks or bungee jump bungee jump not a great swimmer <laughs> yeah, nice um you can only go on one for the rest of your life TikTok or Instagram TikTok. Are you a big TikToker? Um you just yes, like I, I I I can scroll on TikTok for probably hours. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting but that I, reminder that's like it's time to go to bed. And I'm yeah, like, Damn, I know. should go to bed. The one sleep reminder there's like, you've been scrolling a long time, like go eat a snack. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop. Let me 
<laughs> TikTok. <laughs> like I'm doing my thing. I don't. Know. I'm good. <laughs> Would you rather buy new cleats or sneakers? Sneakers. And last one. What's your biggest soccer girl problem? Hmm. Never being able to do anything on the weekends. Mm. True. That is such a big soccer problem. Probably I remember true. my whole life that <laughs> since we were what, 12. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, I end. think that's been happening since fifth grade. <laughs> so <laughs> you should text your friends from like fifth grade that like you said and be like, hey, I'm ready now. Let's do something on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, are you guys free this weekend? <laughs> I, know I said I wasn't free for 20 years. Now yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was so great to get to know you, and we're so excited to continue to watch all your success. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Soccer girls, you know we got some problems. So tune in, away we talk, and I'll stop them. We may laugh, we may learn, we might be.